Welcome to Arise Online Chemistry class. Today we are going to discuss the MCQs of Organic Chemistry, some basic principles and techniques. So let us move on to the first question. The first question, the IUPAC name of the given structure is. The structure is given and it is related to IUPAC name. So what is the general format of IUPAC name? Prefix plus word root plus primary suffix plus secondary suffix. So, this is the general IUPAC name format. So, let us consider the structure. Okay. So, the structure is C, CH2, CH3, CH3, CH, CH3, CH3, then you have CH2, CH2, CH3. So, this is the compound given and the first rule is select the longest carbon chain. If there are more than one longest carbon chain, select the longest carbon chain with more number of branches. So, the longest carbon chain selected will be this one because this is the longest carbon chain containing more number of branches and you have to number in such a way that the substance should get the lowest possible number. So, the numbering will be in this format 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 because if you number in the other way what happens because the substituent will get the fourth and fifth position. If you are numbering in this format it is second and third position. So, this for numbering format is chosen. Okay, Then you have to name prefix plus word root plus primary suffix plus secondary suffix. Prefix is indicating substituents. We have ethyl and methyl as a substituent and the substituents are written in the alphabetical order. So, ethyl comes first. So, it is 3 ethyl. How many methyl? 2 methyl. So, you have to use the prefix di. So, the positions are also to be indicated 2, 3 dimethyl. How many carbon atoms in the longest carbon chain? 6 carbon atoms. So, the word root comes as hex and since all the carbon carbon bones are single bone, so the primary suffix comes as ANA. There is no secondary suffix here because there is no functional group. So, which is the name? 3 ethyl 2 3 dimethyl hexane. So, which is the option? 3 ethyl 2 3 dimethyl hexane. It is option C. Now, moving on to the next question. The IUPAC name of CH triple bond C. C, CH3, double bond CH, CH3. Here there is no confusion in the longest carbon chain. This is the longest carbon chain. Then you have, you can number in two ways. I will show the numbering. You can number from the left side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Because there is only one substituent here. That is CH3. If you can, you can also number from the right side also. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here whatever the way you number CH3 is in the third position itself. So, you do not have to give much importance to the substituents. You have to give importance to the functional group that is an alkene and alkyne group is there. So, what you have to do is when you number from left side you have 1 and third positions that is the triple bond is starting at the first carbon and the double bond will be starting at the second carbon. If you are numbering from the right side, double bond is starting from the second carbon and the triple bond will be starting from the fourth carbon. So, which will be the chosen one, 1 and 3. So, the starting from left side is chosen as the numbering. So, <coughs> it is CH triple bond C, C, CH3 double bond CH single bond CH3. So, what will be the name? So, there is only one substitute that is 3 methyl it is how many carbon atoms in the longest carbon chain pent now there are two functional groups alkene and alkyne so in alkene it is ene and alkyne it is yna it is written in alphabetical order so ene comes first its position is indicated it is 3 e 1 i okay so, this is the format. So, this can also be written in this format also 3 methyl, 3 pent in 1 ion. In this format also you can write both are same. So, which is the option? It is option P. Now, moving on to the next question. Next question, which of the following pairs of trivial names and IUPAC names are correctly matched? So, let us consider each option. First is isohexane. Isohexane is 
CH3, CH, CH3, CH2, 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 CH3. Iso means this group. This group is known as CH3, CH, CH3 group is known as iso groups. This is isohexane. So what you have to do is select the longest carbon chain. Here there is no confusion in longest carbon chain. Then you have to number it in such a way the substituent get the lowest possible number. So the numbering is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it is 2-methyl hexane. Okay. So the first option is the correct one. Isohexane is 2-methyl hexane. So it is option now moving on to the next question, IUPAC name of the compound, this is a bicyclic compound, actually this compound is like this, you have two rings, okay, there are two rings, this is the first ring and this is the second ring and here you have a, this is known as the bridged carbon and there is only one bridge carbon okay Bicycle, bicyclo compounds are named like this you have to write the term bicyclo since it is a bicyclo compound then you have to indicate the number of carbon atoms in the two rings you have to indicate not these carbons these are the bridging carbons not the bridge carbons the other number of carbons so here you have two carbons these two are indicating carbon so you have two carbons here here also you have two carbons and so the number of carbon atoms two in this ring two in the second ring then one bridge head carbon these are indicated in brackets then it's an alkene right so how will you number this that is the next point you have to note it down you have to number starting from a bridging carbon so the numbering starts here since you can either go this way or this way but you have to choose in this format why because there is a double bone that should get the priority so it is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 that is numbering will be starting from a bridging carbon and it will end in a bridgehead carbon that is the last number okay so it is hept 2 in so it is bicyclo 2 2 1 hept 2 in so which is the option here bicyclo 2 2 1 hept 2 in so it is option a now moving on to the next question this is question related to isomerism CH3, CHOH, CH2, CHO, CH3, CH2, CH2, CH, COH constitute a pair of options given are precision isomers, metamers, optical isomers and functional isomers. Okay. So let us consider CH3, CHOH, CH2, CHO and the other one is CH3, CH2, CH2, COH. You have to find out the uh, are their molecular formula is same both are having four carbons how many hydrogens three four five six seven eight eight hydrogens and two oxygen so it is c4 h8 2 what about this it is c4 again h8 o2 okay both are having same molecular formula what is the difference difference in their functional group so it is a functional isomer what a position they are having same molecular formula, same functional group but differ in their position. But here we have different functional groups, so it is a functional isomer. So what is a metamer? They are having different chain lengths on the either side of the functional group. Optical isomerism, difference in the rotation of the plane polarized light. Okay. So it is option D, functional isomer. Okay. Now moving on to the next question. Which of the following compound is isomeric with propanoic acid? So what is propanoic acid? Propanoic acid is CH3, CH2, COH. Prop means 3. Oic acid means carboxylic acid. So one of the carbon will be COH. So there are other two carbons. Then you have to substitute with hydrogen in order to satisfy the valency. So it will be CH3, CH2, COH. That is propanoic acid. What is the formula? It is C3, H6, O2. So let us consider which of the compound is having same molecular formula that is C3H6O2. So let us consider the first compound 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 carbons right. So this will not be the option. So consider the second one. It is C3 
2, 4, 5, 6, H6, O2. So, option B has the same molecular formula that of propanoic acid. So, that can be an isomer of propanoic acid. So, which is the option? It is option B. Okay. Now, moving on to the next question. The pair of structures represent. This is the Newman projection formula of conformational isomers. So, it is representing the conformers. So, it is option C. Now, moving on to the next question. Choose the group showing position isomers. There is a correction here. Here, it is not A. It is chlorine. What is position isomers? They have they are having same molecular formula, same functional formula, same functional group, but differ in their position of their functional group. So you can see that this A and D are having same groups, right? Same molecular formula, same functional group, but differ in their position. So A and D can be considered as position isomers. So which is the option? This option C. Okay. You can also check for option B and E. Why B and E cannot be considered as a position isomers? Because their molecular formula does not match. Because B is 3 carbon and E is 4 carbon. So, it is not suiting the uh, definition of isomers. Okay. So, it is option C. Okay. Now, moving on to the next question. Match list 1 with list 2 and then select the correct answer from the codes given below the list. Okay. So, a is ethyl formide. I will write the formula of ethyl formide. It is HCOO C2H5 ethanamide. It is CH3 CO NH2 that is ethanamide. Propyl nitrile is CH3 CH2 CN but 2 e it is CH3 CH double bone CH CH3. This is but 2 e Okay, uh, what is formamide? Uh, formamide is HCO, NH2 is known as formamide, and ethyl isocyanide is CH3, CH2, NC. Okay, here when you consider this propane nitrile and CH3, CH2, NC, you can see that they are having same molecular formula but differ in their functional group. So, these propane nitrile can be considered as a functional group isomer of ethyl cyanide. So, C can match with what? B. Okay. Then, here this is an amide. Amide means the groups, uh, the compounds having CO and NH2 groups are known as amides. So, first amide will have a 1 carbon, second amide will have a second carbon, right? So, higher homologue of formamide. So, this B, ethanamide is CH3, CO, NH2, right? And what is formamide? HCO, NH2. So, ethanamide is CH3, CO, NH2, which is 2 carbon amide. So, HCO, NH2 is a 1 carbon amide. So, we can, what is a homologue? Homologue means what? It is a group of compounds which is represented by same molecular formula but differ successive member by a CH2 group. Okay, that can be considered as a high homologue. So, here ethanamide considered as a higher homologue of formamide. So, B can be matched with B itself. Then, what about A? Ethyl formide. Ethyl formide HCOC2H5 and here it is CH3 COOCH3, right? So, HCO C2H5 and CH3 CO CH3. So, here what is metamers? Metamer means they are having different chain lines on the either side of the functional group. So, this is the ester group. So, we can see that on either side as uh, on either side they are having different chain lines. So, that can be considered as a metamer. So, ethyl formide can be considered as a metamer of CH3 CO CH3. So, a stands with C. So, obviously what will be D? D stands with A. 2-butene, the chain isomer of isobutene. It is butylene and butene is same. Okay. So, which is the option? It is option B. Now, moving on to the next question. Which among the following are metamers? What are metamers? They are having same functional group, but they differ in their 
chain lengths on the either side of functional group. So let us consider the first one CH3 O CH2 CH2 CH3 CH3 O CH CH3 CH3. So here we can see that here what is the difference they differ in their chain length of their on their either side of the functional group. So which is the option itself that is option A itself okay. B cannot be considered as a metama because they are having different functional groups okay. C both are same and uh, what about D? CH3 C double bond O CH3 CH3 CH2 C double bond O H they are functional isomers because they are having different functional groups. So which is the option? It is option A okay. Now moving on to the next question which does not show tautomerism okay. What is tautomerism that can be considered by using an example so CH2 double bond CHOH okay. This is the enol form enol form means to the double bonded carbon you have a functional group like OH. So what happens is that these OH electrons are shifted here. So this becomes C double bond O. So the carbon valency becomes 5. So this 5 electrons are shifted to this carbon. So obviously this hydrogen will be shifted here. So it becomes CH3 C double bond O H. This is the keto form. This is known as keto no tautomerism. So during tautomerism if tautomerism happens it must end in a stable alkene. So that is the condition. So let us consider here obviously in the first compound it can show tautomerism because this because it will end up in a stable alkene. This is the keto form it can form an enol form also. What about this one here if you do tautomerism it will be like this double bond O double bond NH okay. So what is the enol form of this compound let us check into it. So here this is the keto form and what you have to do is I am writing in expanded form okay C C C C C double bond O here have double bonds so it is CH H and here also CH CH the C C double bond N H okay. So let us consider the enol form of this. So what happens is that this pi electrons will be shifting here. So what happens is that I will show the enol form. So what happens is this in the C double bond O group the pi electrons are shifted to oxygen so it becomes O minus okay. So this carbon valency become 3. So immediately the CH electrons will be shifted here so it becomes a double bond and this hydrogen will be getting attached to this oxygen. So that will be the enol form of that compound. So how will it be written? So it will be I will write it here C CH double bond CH C double bond NH CH double bond C this becomes a double bond. So this is not here C this becomes OH. So what is the hybridization of this carbon it is SP hybridized. SP hybridized should have a linear structure not a planar structure so it is unstable in cyclic form. So this hybridization is not possible in cyclic form so this is an unstable enol so this compound cannot show tautomerism all these compounds can show tautomerism okay all A, C and D can tot show tautomerism but B cannot form tra tautomerism why because it is not forming a stable enol form okay so it is option 
B. Now moving on to the next question. Something related to the previous question. Totemism is not observed in CH3, C double bond O, CH3. Then pH means it is C6H5. The benzene ring is okay. That is written as pH. C6H5, CH double bond, CHOH. CH3, NO2. CH3, C, CH3, CH3, CHO. So, which is not showing a totemism. Uh, option A will show totemism. This is the keto form. The enol form is like this. CH2, H. C double bond O CH3 what happens this pi electrons are shifted so the CH electrons will be shifted here. So what is the requirement to show a totomerism we require an alpha CH group. What is alpha carbon? The carbon which is next to the functional group is known as alpha carbon. That carbon should contain a hydrogen. That is the condition for a totomerism. Okay. What is the condition for a totomerism? That is the functional group neighboring carbon should have a hydrogen. In certain cases if hydrogen is possible also then also totomerism will not be possible. Why it is so? Because if it is not ending in a stable enol form it will not result in tautomerism okay but in this case here you have an alpha ch bond and it will end up in a stable al enol form so ch3 c double bond o ch3 will show tautomerism so by looking at this we can see that in this compound what is this compound ch3 c ch3 ch3 c double bond o h right so this is the alpha carbon right. So, in this alpha carbon is it containing a hydrogen atom? No. So, because since there is no alpha hydrogen atom this compound cannot show totomerism. So, which is the compound is not showing totomerism that is option D. All others can show totomerism ok. Now, moving on to the next question. So, what is the condition for totomerism? It must contain a alpha hydrogen. Even though if there is a presence of alpha hydrogen in certain cases it will not end up in totomerism. Why? Because it is not producing a stable enol form. Okay. Now moving on to the next question. Which compound has the R configuration? Okay. So let us consider that. So I will take with an example. I will choose one compound. Okay, this is one compound I have chosen here. We can also choose other compound also. Okay, if H, OH, CH3, uh, CHO. Okay, so this is this is the central carbon. So to that central carbon, you have four groups: OH, CH3, CHO, H. This is a, just an example to show what is R and S configuration. This R and S configuration is known as absolute configuration. It is just a representation, okay. So, here you can see that in central carbon you have four different groups. So, you have to number these groups attached to the central carbon in such and how the priority is given. The one which is having higher atomic number will get the first priority. So, here you can see OH, CH3, CHO, H. So, here OH will have the first priority. Why it is having first priority? Because oxygen is having the higher atomic number. So, that is getting the highest priority. Then you have CH3, then you have CHO, then you have H. Then you have CHO group here. So, if CHO group you have a high so, in CHO and CH3 out of this which will get the highest priority both are having carbon then you have to go for the next carbon next atom 
So, in CH you have the oxygen and in CH3 you have the hydrogen. So, which is having greater atomic number? CH2 is having greater atomic number. So, that get the next priority. So, it is second position, then you have third position, then you have fourth position. Here you have two lines, vertical line and horizontal line. Here the least priority group, this is the hydrogen is in the vertical line. Then you have two, how this priority goes? 1, 2, 3, right. So, it is an anti-clockwise direction, then it will have a S configuration. If it is in the clockwise direction, then it will have a R configuration. So, what you have to do in order to assign R and S configuration? You have to assign the priority. How you are assigning the priority? The priority is assigned according to their atomic number. The one which is having higher atomic number will get the highest priority. Okay. And then you have to know whether the priority is in the anti-clockwise or clockwise. If it is in anti-clockwise, it is an S. If it is in clockwise, it is R. Okay. There is one condition if the least priority is in the vertical line. If the least priority is in the horizontal line, then you have to reverse it. That we can consider this compound here you can see here the how will you assign it obviously OH will have the first priority it is 1 then you have CHO and CH2OH. So, here in CHO and CH2 both are having carbon, oxygen and hydrogen but in CHO to C double bond OH if there is a multiple bonded that will give the highest priority. So, it is 2 then you have 3, then you have 4. Here the least priority is in the horizontal line. Okay. So, what you have to do it, how it is in the form 1, 2, 3, right. So, it is anti-clockwise, right. If it is anti-clockwise, then you have to choose what S. But if the least priority is in the horizontal line, then you have to reverse it. So, what is the configuration? R configuration. Okay. So, if it is in the vertical line, if it is in clockwise, then it is R, anti-clockwise it is S. If the least priority is in the horizontal, then the reverse. That is anti-clockwise R, clockwise S. Okay. So, which is having the R configuration, obviously C is having the R configuration. Okay. Now, moving to another compound similar to this, the correct statement about A B and C. Okay. The compounds given are A and B are identical, A and B are diastereoisomers, A and B are enantiomers, A and C are enantiomers, A and B are enantiomers. So, what are enantiomers? What are diastereoisomers? Okay. So, enantiomers means they are stereoisomers which are non superimposable but have different optical rotation or they rotate the plane polarized light in different directions equally but in different directions. Such compounds are known as what? Enantiomers. Diastereoisomers means they are stereoisomers which are non superimposable but does not have any connection with their optical activity. Okay. So, that is known as what diastereoisomers and enantiomers. So, actually it is option D A and B are enantiomers. Both are non superimposable on each other, but rotate the plane polarized light equally, but in different directions. Okay. So, which is the option? It is option D. Now, moving on to the next question. The following two compounds are A enantiomers, B diastereoisomers, C identical, D epimers. Both are enantiomers. Here also, both are having, they are stereoisomers, which is having same properties, but differ in their optical rotation. That is, they rotate the plane polarized light equally, but in different directions. So, it is enantiomers, it is option A. Now, moving on to the next question. The absolute configuration of the compound is here you have two asymmetric carbons. What do you mean by asymmetric carbon? All the groups attached to that carbon will be different. That is known as asymmetric carbon. You have to assign the absolute configuration for these two carbons. That is the second and third carbon. So, the compound can be written in expanded form is like this. 
or you can choose like this uh, these two are carbons so you can number it second and third okay so consider the first carbon you have to assign the priority so how will you assign the priority so you have when you consider the second carbon this is the you have four groups i have marked these four groups so which should have the greater priority so obviously chlorine will have the greater priority because chlorine is having the higher atomic number then you have two then you have three then you have four okay so here there is one problem okay so you have two here because in the second group you have chlorine attached to it so this carbon get the second priority this will ch3 get the third priority so here the orientation will be in the clockwise direction so but the least priority is in the horizontal line so since it is a clockwise we assign r but it should be in the reverse form so it will be s then similarly what about the next group so if you mark it like this uh, cl h c2 h5 and this group so you have to assign like this so it is one you have two then you have three then you have four so chlorine gets the first priority this group is getting the second priority c2h5 is getting the third priority so what will be the order and like this one two three so it is in clockwise direction so again the least priority is in the horizontal line so you have to assign as s so it is 2s and 3s so which is the option it is option b okay this is how you assign absolute configuration absolute configuration is based on what the assigning priority assigning priority is based on the atomic number okay till now we have discussed the mcqs of organic chemistry some basic principles and technique i hope all you understand the rest of the mcqs will be done in the next class thank you